day to everyone here. Well, it's so good to get to meet all of you here again. Now, today's lesson will be on non-textbook based on the workbook dual channel PDPC, and the lesson will be on page 79, 81, and 82. And as usual, let us get to know the objectives for the lesson today. One, we shall write, yeah, uh, write about uh, 80 words or so in replying a postcard. And two, we are going to revise on grammar, er and consonant and vowel sound, including some and any. And the third one will be reciting a poem, yeah, reciting a poem, and it will be a literature in action. Alright, so these are the three objectives for the lesson. On page 79, here's the exercise. Writing exercise. Read a postcard you received from your friend from Brazil. Right, let's read together. Dear Yahya, Greetings from Brazil. I am in Rio de Janeiro, one of the most visited cities in my country. I'm having the best time of my life here. So far, I visited Sugarloaf Mountain. I walked through the Tijuca National Park and swam at Copacabana Beach. Tomorrow, Mom and I are going on a helicopter tour over the city. Can you believe it? I'm so excited that I can't sleep and I am writing this postcard to you now. Please write to me about the best place to visit in your country. I might go there one day. Your friend, Louise. And here is the, uh, right, uh, the address that uh, Louise writing to Yahya Athif in Perlis. And the question here will be, in about 80 words, replies postcard sharing about the tourist attractions in your country and describe the activities that can be done. Okay, that is the, well, the exercise that you need to do. Now, before you write, right here will be, okay. Now, the things that you need to write down on your workbook, the day and the date itself. So, you may write down bright sunny Wednesday or whichever the day that you are going to do this exercise. And it's the 1st of September today. And uh, here, this is the concept map that I want to show you before you start writing. All right, this is a tourist attraction, which is Perlis. This is the state, one of the states in Malaysia. And start with greeting to why pick this place? Well, you can talk about the scenario or the, you know, the tranquility of the place, the landscape of the place. And the third one, you may write uh, where and what you enjoy most. So you may touch on activities, uh, things that you can do there, the scenery there, and the food that you enjoy. Uh, what kind of food that is quite popular and uh, famous there. And the fourth one, well, you, you may need to uh, offer an invitation to your friend and ask, well, ask him to come over. So now we are going to start the writing. So here we go. Dear Louis, this is a boy's name, yeah? Louis. Right, so here. Greetings from Malaysia. You can, you know, copy or follow back how it was written by, you know, by Louis. And here you write down. Greetings from Malaysia. All right, and uh, you want to tell him about your hometown. So you say, I want 
to tell you about my hometown. Prolis. It is the smallest smallest state in Malaysia. And it is the best part of Malaysia to stay. Especially for those who simply want to enjoy being in a lower density quiet and calm place all right and calm place now lower density here it means less crowded not many people it means less crowded okay next while driving yes you can drive around the place while driving around the state people will enjoy a panoramic view of the expanse of paddy fields paddy fields the green hilly countryside hilly countryside yeah definitely is uh, not in you know, right, uh, the metropolis area it's a countryside yeah hilly countryside and some pictures fishing villages now, there are quite a number of villages there which you can really visit the place someday so the paddy fields is they are of spectacular view so here we go the next one will be since I am a nature lover. I am a nature lover like you. I often go to a beautiful Sleepy Lake
comma. So you may put down the name of the leg. Find it out on Google, yeah? Research it. Research the place. So this is Dima. Dima Taso Lake. Full stop. I really enjoyed my morning job there. Where I could where I could observe grazing cattle. Yeah. So you can see a lot of cows goats grazing grass there cattle and waddling ducks there is also a scenery of Incredible limestone hills. In the middle, of flat rice fields. Flat rice fields just opposite the lake. All right, just opposite the lake. Well, let's talk about the food now. For seafood, yes, they do have plenty there. Seafood, yeah. Seafood enthusiasts. Enthusiasts. Here it means people who are enthusiastic in something. Enthusiasts. Alright. Uh, you can go to you can go to Kuala Perlis. Check out this place yeah, if you like seafood. Go to Kuala Perlis and have sumptuous seafood. Seafood meals for dinner. Right? For dinner. This place. is well known as seafood heaven with plenty of stalls along the seaside beside the jetty you should come now this is the invitation yeah that uh, you offer to your friend 
You should come here to experience a different ambience. This is the one. So at the end, there, your friend, yeah, yeah. So if you have any question regarding this writing, do drop me a message at the comment box. Alright. So this is how we write or describe about a tourist attraction in your country. Let's go to the next exercise. Okay, on page 81, here's the grammar awareness that we need to revise here. A or an, some, any. Here, a and an are used when something is mentioned for the first time or to refer to a non-specific noun. Let's take a look at the rules here. A, a is used before countable nouns, which begin with a consonant noun or begin with the vowel U, pronounced as U. Right? And the example here, a, a motorcycle, a shirt, a doctor, a banana, a restaurant, b, a uniform, a university, a European car, a utensil. So, Take note of this. It is pronounced as you, you. Right? And two, an is used before countable nouns which begin with a vowel sound, A, E, I, O, U, or begin with a silent H. So here I want to explain further on this. A, E, I, O, U, how does it sound like actually? Right, so it's A, E, E, O, U. And here for this E, it could mean a two sound here. One is E, the other one. The other one, one is E, and the other one could be E. So A, E, 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 O, U. Remember, this is not so much about the, the alphabet itself. It's, it's more on the vowel sound. Again, I repeat. A, E, 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 O, U. Alright? Now, let's take a look at the examples here given. A, an onion. You see, onion. It's this O here is pronounced as onion. It's more to this. Yeah? A, onion. An aeroplane. Aeroplane is here. Air. So an aeroplane, you put N there. Next, an elephant, an umbrella. You see, there's a U here, but the pronunciation is a, diff a bit different. Ah, uh, so ah, uh, um, an umbrella. B, an hour. So this is a silent H. All right, hour. An honest person. An honor. And air, right? So, uh, if you have any question or uh, yeah, any question regarding this vowel sound, do drop me a message, right, at the comment box there. And the third one here, sum, is used when we do not know the exact amount or number of a noun, right? And the examples here say, a, can I have some milk please b there is some rice left in your bowl so this is pretty simple let's go to the next one any any is used to refer to an indefinite amount or quantity in negative sentences or questions All right take note of this negative sentences or questions so it means the not will be there 
the word not. Let's look, let, uh, let's look at the examples here. A. Can I not have any vegetable, please? B. Not just any person can enter this place. So, any. You can see it comes along with the word not. It means negative. All right. Now, let's take a look at the, the exercise given here. Exercise A. This is page 81. Fill in the blanks with a er or an. And again, as a reminder, a, e, 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 o, u. And that's for the vowel sound. Question 1. I have spare ruler. Spare. So, so we use a. Uh. Two, my sister is actress. So, ah, 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 ah. Here, ah. This ah, uh, ah. Uh. So here will be an. So ah, a, a, e, o, u is used for an or the. Yeah? In certain situation. Now here three. He is hard working postman. So hard. So we put there is no R A E E O U here. So we put a. Uh. Four. Kuma buys long wooden stick. Very simple. Definitely is an a uh already. Now here five. Hashimi puts and into the box. So and, the vowel sound is there, so we put and. And here, six. Arlene will bring cake to his surprise birthday party. There is no vowel sound here, cake. So we put down a. Uh. Seven. I plan to go to restaurant to have my dinner so is there any vowel sound here mm, restaurant rest so no so we put a uh. b uh, so eight <coughs> we decided to meet at abandoned storehouse to discuss the plan so a uh, so here a uh, a uh, the sound is there so the vowel sound is there so we put an and abandon right so i guess after the exercise you will have a better idea on how to use the consonant and also the vowel sound in for a and n for a and n let's go to the next exercise exercise b b underline the error and write the correct word well the instruction is very simple so for one Lisa completed her work without some help. Here, why is why should we underline some? It's because, all right, you see, there's a not a without. That means not. Without that's negative sentence. So we put any. Right. So here, number two, it takes an hour by train, but two hours by bus. So hour, can you see that this sounded like the vowel sound? So hour, and so we underline the article er. So, and then we change it to an, an hour. Yeah, all right, three. I have any food to give to the homeless man. I have any food. So I would say we underline any, any. Yeah, any, we normally use it for negative sentence or questions, but this is an affirmative sentence. This is not 
a negative sentence. So it's an affirmative sentence. So any food, we change it to some. I have some food to give to the homeless man. As for question four, Nancy has a daughter and a son. Now, a son will be correct, but the error will be here. Why? Because daughter, there is no vowel sound here. What would you say should, that we should write here? So, daughter, a daughter. All right, next exercise. Exercise C, quite a lot here. So let's take a look. The question says still in the blanks with some or any. Right, so one, we need food and drinks. So food and drinks, this is an affirmative sentence. We put down some. Right, the guideline would be some. Normally, it is normally it is for affirmative sentence and any for negative sentence or questions. All right, here too. Patrick has bought chocolates, so this is an affirmative sentence. So we put down some. Three. Have you got tissue or paper? Now, when it comes to a question like this. Have you got? You are asking whether you have or you don't have. And so we can put down any. Have you got any tissue or paper? All right. Four. Mom did her chores without. See, negative here. So we put down any. Mom did her chores without any help. Question five. You cannot buy posters in this shop. So you see, the not is there. It's a negative sentence. So what should we put down? Yes, any. Simple, isn't it? All right. Let's go on to the next question. Maria spilled. Now this is a past. This is a past tense. Yeah, past tense sentence. Now may I ask, what is the present tense for spilled? If you remember. Present tense will be spills, right? Here, Mariam spilled salt into her plate of spaghetti. All right, spilled. This is an affirmative sentence, so we put down some. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Seven. Jules sprinkled flour onto the table before kneading the flour. Now, flour. It is a British pronunciation. If you want to read flour, it will be the American pronunciation. So we follow flour. All right, we read it as flour. Okay, sprinkle some. This is an affirmative sentence. So we put down some. Let's go to the next one. Question eight. I do not have money with me right now. You see, this there's a not here, negative sentence. So we put down any. Nine. They do not know person named Richard in the school. Again, this is a negative sentence. So we put down any. Next ten. Should I bring food? For our sleepover at your house tonight. So you're gonna sleep over, uh, yeah. I'm gonna sleep over at your house tonight. All right, stay for the night. That means. So this is a question, all right? Um, should I bring some food, or should I bring any food for our sleepover? Should I bring any food, or should I bring some food? I would say both are acceptable. It's either some. Or any. Yes,、yeah, so、you just pick either one. I would say it's correct. Should I bring some food or should I bring any food? Okay. So next, eleven. 
So kind of flower would do as we only want to give her a small bouquet. Hmm. Now normally, uh, we put any here. Any kind of flowers. All right. We don't put some kind of flower. Yeah, it will sound strange. Just any kind of flower would do. Okay, twelve. Ivan should have told me if he had milk to spare for the kitten. So this is a uh, an affirmative sentence. So we put down he had some. All right. So that's it for the exercise C. Coming to page eighty-two, this is the literature in action on poem set I am's, and you are required to read the poem carefully and then answer the following questions. Now let us recite this poem together. Set I am's. I am the ring from an empty collar can, the scrapings from an unwashed porridge pan, the severed arm. Of last year's action man. I am the envelope on which the gum is gone, the cello tape where you can't find the end, the toothless stapler, springless bulldog clip, the dried-up liquid paper that mars instead of mends, the stamped. Addressed reply that you forgot to send. I am the battery in which no charge is left, the starter motor, which remains inert, the tire on which the tread is worn, the sparking plug which shows no sign of spark. Carburetor choked by bits of dirt, the chromium trim from which the shine has gone. I am a garden overgrown with weeds, a library book that no one ever reads, a stray which no one thinks to feed, the piece of good advice. Which no one seems to need by Trevor Nolan. So here, before we start answering the questions, I would like to you to copy this vocabulary into your vocabulary book. So in your vocabulary book, please write this down: the day and the date. Write down page eighty-two, workbook page eighty-two, and poem said I am. And the vocabulary here will be one severed. It means broken, and two bulldog clip. Yeah. Uh. Well, I would rather you draw this because it gives you a better picture of what bulldog clip is. So here, three mar. It means to spoil something, and four man means to repair something that is broken. Five. Inert. It means not moving or unable to move. Tread. Yeah, tread here、uh, is for the tires.、So、it means the pattern on tire. And seven spark plug. Well, it's for the carburetor. Yeah. So this is a spark plug. All right. It's how you. It looks like you can.、Uh, probably you can draw better than me. So eight. This is a carburetor. The part of an engine that mixes fuel and air, producing the gas, well, that burn to operate vehicles or machines, and this chromium trim will be this, yeah, where the tire is fixed onto it. So it's supposed to be shining, yeah, sparkling or glittering. All right, this is the chromium trim, and ten stray means、uh, a pet without a home. Well, without any owner, couldn't find its way home. So you can write down a pet without a home. So this it. This is it for the vocabulary. All right, you need to copy all these ten vocabulary、uh, the words into your vocabulary book. Yeah, vocabulary book. So for the exercise.
for this poem will be like this. A. Based on stanza 1, what happens to the action man? Yeah. Action man. Okay, so here as you can see, the severed arm of last year's action man. So you can say um, it's arm is severed or you can say broken all right severed here means broken as what i've shown you in the vocabulary just now and b in stanza two what happens to the envelope all right let's look at the stanza two what happens to the envelope the envelope on which the gum is gone. Well, you can say it's gum or the gum. It's gum is gone. So it doesn't stick anymore. Right? The it's gum is gone or the gum is gone. Okay, question C. Why do you think the starter motor remains inert here why do you think now this is a question that requires you to really uh, think why would something not moving or unable to move anymore well you can say uh, it is broken or damage that means spoiled or there's another word that you can learn here overhaul that means overworked All right so you just choose one one of these three it is broken or damaged or overhaul yeah, overwork in a way. So that's why it remains inert. It is it can't move anymore. Okay, let's go to the next one. D. What will happen if someone uses a tire with tread that is worn? Okay, the tread is worn. Imagine that. Yeah, uh, if the tread is worn, and what will happen? Just just think of the possible answers. So why do we need to change tires when the tread is almost worn all right so uh it could be now we're, because we are on the road you see yeah so it could means uh, that it is dangerous definitely yeah you can write down like that so the next one it could means uh it may cause an accident all right, it may cause an accident. Yes, accident can happen if you don't change the tire when the tread is worn. So here is here is it for the exercise for the set I am. All right, if you have any question, please do drop me a message at the comment box. That's all for the lesson today, and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care and stay healthy. Thank you.